Hi, I'd like to share with you a, a simple technique for making uh, easy little uh, wooden whistles on the lathe. This is an example of one. Uh, I'll try to get a little closer view of it for you here. This is the end you blow into and this is the end you hold on to. And uh, you can make these in a matter of a couple of hours or even less once you, once you uh, get set up for it. I'll show you the technique. It's really quite simple. I'll start with a, a block of wood. This happens to be a piece of <coughs> hard maple. And it's about an inch square and it's about four inches long. And the first thing we're going to do is cut a groove on an angle into one end of the piece of wood. Actually, I remeasured it, and it's closer to an inch and a quarter square. It, uh, it's not that critical. Uh, I would say the minimum would be a one inch. Now, you can see I have my uh, tilt box, my Beetle Tool Company tilt box, set up on my saw blade. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crank it to a 30 degree angle. Let's get that going. There we go. Next we want our depth of cut to be about one half of an inch. So we'll get that measured out. That's about a half inch right there. And I'll set up my cross cut fence here. And we'll want to make that cut angling towards the short end so that uh, the edge of the cut is about 5 eighths of an inch from the edge of the piece of wood. So let me measure that out and get it set up. Okay, here we go. We'll make that cut. There's the cut. Now we're ready to drill a hole in the center. Now you want to be fairly fussy about lining this up so that you get the hole uh, centered as closely as you possibly can so that it strikes the uh, groove just in the right spot. And uh, we'll be drilling a 3 8 inch hole. So I have a 3 8 inch bit in here. And I have a piece of tape marking it at an inch and 3 quarter, which is the depth I'm going to drill this. Now by varying that depth, you can actually adjust the tone of your whistle and something you might want to play with uh, just to get one that suits you best but I found uh, that one works good for me so I'm going to drill that hole okay on to the next step Okay, I'm over at the lathe now, and I have mounted just a little piece of scrap wood. Um, the only reason I chose this side is because it was a piece I had laying around. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn down a little uh, jam chuck for ourselves to mount the whistle on. And that means we have to turn round this off and turn it down to 3 eighths of an inch so it'll fit inside the hole we just drilled. So, let me get that lined up, and we'll start getting that going. Okay. Okay. Going to test fit it. So I'll take a little more off of that and just kind of gradually work it down until it's a, a nice snug fit, but yet one that you can't get it off again. And then you want to be sure to leave a shoulder here to uh, butt your face up again so you make sure you get a, a nice square setting. Okay, I've got it down to a, a nice tight fit, and I'm going to put the piece onto the jam chuck we just made. Let's push it all the way in until it seats itself on that shoulder. 
And then I'm going to bring my tailstock up just for some support while I do the, the main turning, the rough turning here. Okay, it's all lined up and ready to turn. And my hole must have been just a little bit uh, less than perfectly straight because this is running just a little cockeyed. But that's okay because really what you want to do is uh, turn it parallel to the hole. So that's why I started out with a little bigger block than I need. I'm going to be turning this down to a cylinder about uh, three, well, seven eighths of an inch uh, in diameter or something like that. So I will set my bigger calipers for that size and get started turning. I'm going to start out with my roughing gouge to do uh, the bulk of the uh, removal and uh, then maybe switch over to a uh, spindle gouge or, or a skew or something to do the final. Okay, let's get started. to get to our 7 eighths of an inch diameter. So I'm going to switch over to my spindle gouge. None of these dimensions are really set in stone. You can virtually make it any size uh, you want. I think it's critical to uh, keep your the depth of your cut on the angle here and also the diameter of the hole uh, consistent. Uh, you could make that even bigger or larger or smaller uh, as you see fit too. But um, from here out, the design of this is pretty much up to you. Anything you want to do is, is going to be just fine. Okay, now we'll give some thought on what we want to do for shape. Just to show you, this is the example I showed you already made, and uh, we can do something similar. I like to turn this end down to, uh, to a narrower dimension, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe 5 eighths or half an inch, something like that. Just, it's a little easier to put in your mouth than a great big thick thing like that. Although you certainly could leave it there if, if you like the looks of that too. Um, so, we'll figure out what we're going to do, uh, mark it off, and uh, get to designing.